Hello, welcome to this video. In this video, I'll try to give you some tips on how to format your resume or CV or curriculum vitae, uh, and also give you some tips as I go along. So the first thing you really have to focus on is alignment. There are different kinds of alignment in Microsoft Word. Left align, center, right, and justify. Basically, use these to your advantage uh, so first, for the header, with your own name and address and information, I would recommend using center right there. Now, um, if this is for just homework and it's not a resume or CV you'll be handing out, you don't have to put all your information. Uh, you can hide some of your personal information using these star symbols right here. So feel free to do so. Okay, now here, the first uh, subject subsection is usually education. Uh, now here, I, I would like to recommend one magical key on your keyboard. It's called the tab, T-A-B, key. Now, um, right here, if you uh, <laughs> enter tab key on Google and you go to images, you'll see where the tab key is. It's right over the caps key right there. So sometimes, uh, if it's not written tab on it, you should still see the arrows. This tab key will become your best friend. Um, actually, I would encourage you to repeat after me right now. Tab is my best friend. Yes, tab is your best friend. Okay, so let's try using the tab key. So you see, if I use a tab, it makes a perfect space and everything will be aligned afterwards if you use tab. So if you use it once, use it twice, use it three times, everything will be aligned perfectly. And I say this because if you, I'll just quick example here, if you just use a space key, perhaps it's not, not going to be perfect. Sometimes not enough, sometimes too much. There you go. So look at the difference here. Look here, compare this part to this part. You see there's a wave movement going on here and that's not good. You want it to be perfect. So I just recommend use the tab key so everything gets aligned perfectly. Okay, so again, let's realign this with tab. So I'll click tab here, tab again, tab again, and again. See, so everything is aligned perfectly. Remember, tab is your new best friend while writing a resume. Okay, so you could write your, uh, your university or your college or what school you're attending, your area of study. Uh, if it's ongoing, if your studies are ongoing, you can write present uh, right here or ongoing. Also, uh, you could write your due to graduate date right there here as well feel free to enter your GPA if you want if you've done some um, if you were part of an exchange program you could uh, enter that right underneath and now going into employment history so if it's something that happened in the past again please enter the dates first and then tab key again I would recommend in bold writing the uh, basically the uh, team you were part or the job you had. I forgot to mention also in education, see here in bold letters the name of the universities uh, you've attended or schools. And now one important thing to note in employment history is a past tense. Since this happened in the past, you should use the past tense to describe uh, what kind of work you've done. One other thing to notice is Usually, um, both in British and American culture, we don't write the subject I. So, I managed a customer service is not written, just managed a customer service um, desk, yes. So, also, semicolon right here. So, you can continue uh, basically showcasing the different tasks, the different jobs you had at that job, yes, at, uh, while you were working at this place. Of course, uh, if you end with etc., a period, then the next sentence will be with a capital letter, so be careful. 
notice here not a capital letter because uh, basically the sentence was continuing right here but here with etc period so again new sentence okay next uh, serving team okay again past tense if it's pat in the past over experience next category over experience and achievements so here we're still in 2020 and so this is an ongoing job so please notice that the verb tense again uh, no subject I but the verb tense is not past it's present progressive so um, for doing this for doing that uh, please note the ing's everywhere so I wrote uh, this example was written in uh, British English uh, so Feel free to use British English or American English. Both are fine, of course. Okay, so these were experiences and uh, achievements. So perhaps you did some volunteer work. Perhaps you won some contests as well. So feel free to write all that. Uh, also here... Um, Oh, here there's no end date. I would actually add an end date here because uh, if you're going to write something in the past tense, you should have your end date written in. As for here, uh, perhaps uh, this is still ongoing. So you could add, just like you, like you did for, the, uh, for education, you could add this or not, you can choose. Uh, but again, if it's present, uh, again, remember, present progressive I'm doing this I'm but uh, again do not use a subject I or am just say in charge of something ing there we go qualifications go and something I would add uh, you don't have to but I would add are references usually it's common to put down two or to write down two references on your resume itself so people can contact two individuals to learn about you. One of these individuals could be uh, your uni one of our university professors or lecturers. Uh, so this is my information. And the other could be um, perhaps a, a job you work for. So example, if you worked for Universal Studios Japan or well, a contact person there, uh, that the person reading your resume could contact to get more information about you. So uh, those are the tips I can I wanted to give you for today. Uh, feel free to make your own resume um, inspired by this format. There are other formats that are good as well. There are so many formats out there on the internet. Feel free to make some modifications. That being said, um, in terms of format, this uh, example is, is very good, and feel free to use it. Thank you for listening.